horrifying, I would say. Anyway, it all started 51 years ago. It was 51 years ago on a Thanksgiving when my friend and I drove up to visit Alice at the restaurant. But Alice doesn't live in the restaurant. She lives in the church nearby the restaurant in the bell tower with her husband Ray and Pasha the dog. And living in the bell tower like that, they got a lot of room downstairs where the pews used to be and having all that room. Seeing as how they took out all the pews, they decided they didn't have to take out the garbage for a long time. We got in there, found all the garbage in there, and we decided it would be a friendly gesture for us to take the garbage down to the city dump. So we took the half a ton of garbage, put it in the back of a red VW microbus, took shovels and rakes and implements of destruction, and headed off toward the city dump. We got there, and there was a big sign and a chain across the dump saying closed on Thanksgiving. We had never heard of a Thanksgiving dump being closed before, so with tears in our eyes, we drove off into the sunset looking for another place to put the garbage. We didn't find one until we came to a side road, and off the side of another road was a 15-foot cliff. Bottom of the cliff was another pile of garbage. We decided one big pile is better than two bivalve piles, and rather than break that one up, we drew ours down. That's what we did. Drove back to the church. Had a Thanksgiving dinner that didn't we couldn't be beat and didn't get up till the next morning when we got a phone call from Officer Hobie. You see it, kid? We found your name on an envelope underneath the half a ton of garbage and wanted to know if you had any information about it. I said, yes sir, Officer Hobie. I cannot tell a lie. I put that envelope underneath that garbage. After speaking to Obi for about 45 minutes on the telephone, we finally arrived at the truth of the matter and said that we had to go down and pick up the garbage, but we also had to go speak to him at the police officer's station. So we got back into the red VW microbus with the shovels and rakes and implements of destruction and headed off toward the police officer's station. Friends, it was one of two things Obi could have done to us at the police officer's station. And the first one was that he could have pinned a medal on us for being so brave and honest on the telephone. Which wasn't very likely, and we didn't expect it. And the other thing was that he could have been balled us out and told us never to be seen hauling garbage around the vicinity again. But when we got to the police officer's station, there was a third possibility that we hadn't even counted upon, and we was both immediately arrested, handcuffed. I said, Obi, I don't think I can pick up the garbage with these handcuffs on. He said, shut up, kid. Get in the back of the patrol car. That's what we did. Sat in the back of the patrol car and drove to the, quote, scene of the crime, unquote. Let me tell you about the town of Stockbridge, Massachusetts, where this is happening here. They got three stop signs, two police officers, one police car, but when we got to the scene of the crime, there were five police officers and three police cars being the biggest crime of the last 50 years, and everybody wanted to get in a newspaper story about it. And they was using up all kinds of cop equipment they had hanging around the police officer's station. They was taking plaster tire tracks, dog smelling prints, and they even took 27 8 by 10 colored glossy photographs, and pictures and arrows, and a paragraph on the back of each one, explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. Took pictures of the approach, the getaway, the northwest corner, the southwest corner. That's not to mention the aerial photography. After the ordeal, we went back to the jail. Opie well, said he's going to put us in the cell. He said, kid, I'm going to put you in the cell. I want your wallet and your belt. 
I said, Obi, I can understand you want my wallet. So as I don't have any money to spend in a cell, but what do you want my belt for? Obi said, kid, we don't want any hands. I said, Obi, you think I'm going to hang myself for littering? Obi said he was making sure, and friends, Obi was, because he took out the toilet seat so I couldn't hit myself over the head and drown. And he took out the toilet paper so I couldn't bend the bars, roll out the roll of toilet paper, down the side of the building, have an escape. Obi was making sure, and it was about four hours later when Alice, remember Alice? Song about Alice. Alice came by him with a few nasty words to Obi on the side, bailed us out of jail. We went back to the church, had another Thanksgiving dinner, it couldn't be beat. Didn't get up till the next morning when we all had to go to court. side of the dirt. But how are you going to know? If you're looking at the daisies instead of pushing them up. Hey, Lamb. 
with my soul went through that ceiling and on up into heaven on a ride. When I got there, they didn't say, Herb, it happened this way. You slipped upon the floor and ate your head. And all those angels say, just before you pass away, they were the very last words that you said.
why should that be significant? John Steideman. <laughs> I just had to get that plug in. Thank you. I, I that. Welcome back over. We got one more. Huh? One more, come on, one more. Okay. You sure? I don't, don't, don't want to be a pig here. No, you're, no, no. I don't want to be a song pig here. Bring my 
my woman sitting right down here by my side.